This is the 7 Artisans 50mm 0.95 aperture lens for APS-C cameras. On paper, this is a pretty remarkable lens, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at some photo and video examples, and basically seeing if this lens is worth adding to your kit bag. Now this APS-C lens is currently available for the EOS M, Fujifilm X, Micro Four Thirds, Nikon Z, and Sony E-mount cameras. And you can pick this up for around £225 on Amazon, or even a little bit cheaper on other websites like eBay. And in this video I'll be testing it on Sony's E-mount on my Sony a7 III. The lens does feature an all metal construction, including the lens mount, and I must say this lens is built like a tank, it feels incredibly premium. It also weighs around 416 grams, and I'm used to using really lightweight Sony lenses, so this was actually a bit of a shock to me when I first got it out of the box, I was like, whoa, this is actually a pretty hefty lens. The lens does feature focus scales and a de-clicked aperture. The aperture ring simply slides back and forth and this is great for filmmakers but not so good for photographers because if you put this in your kit bag and the aperture changes while you've put it down and then you pick it up expecting it to be one aperture but then it's another one you're gonna have some problems as a photographer but I doubt that will happen that often. As I mentioned this lens features a 0.95 aperture which is actually insane. I don't have any lenses with an aperture that wide. This should give you amazing results in low light, but also give you a really pleasing bucket. And for those of you who really love blurring your backgrounds, I think this lens will surprise you. If you're enjoying this video so far, drop it a like, it really helps out the channel. And if you want to see more from me, be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell icon as well, and you'll be told when I upload something new. The lens features seven elements in five groups and includes two Hoyer ultra low dispersion elements to improve contrast and color. And contrast and color will be something I talk about later on in the video. We also have a 13 blade aperture to give you that more pleasing bokeh. At the front we have a 62mm thread for filters or any kind of accessories you want to add on the front of this lens. From an aesthetic standpoint this lens does look great and in my opinion the build quality is very good for the price. I also really like the all black lens mount, it's something you don't really see often but that's purely just an aesthetic feature of this lens. So on paper this lens does look fantastic. How does it perform? So bear in mind that I've been testing this lens on my full frame a7 III, so I've been using this in APS-C crop mode, which actually makes this 50mm lens around a 75mm lens. It also means that instead of my photos being 24 megapixels, they end up being 10. So the samples that I show you throughout this video, bear in mind that these are lower resolution than you'd get if you were actually using this on an APS-C camera. When using this for photography, if you ignore the APS-C mode, you can actually just crop in in Photoshop or Lightroom or whatever you're using, and the crop actually isn't as significant as when you use the crop mode in camera. So instead of having the 1.5 times crop that you get from the Sony a7III's crop mode, it's actually a little bit less. So you do get a wider field of view if you choose to shoot with the vignette. But when it comes to video, if you shoot without crop mode, you will actually get a vignette and then you'll have to crop in post, which means you'll actually lose resolution because the video's 4K, you'll crop in, you'll end up with a lower resolution video file. Basically what I'm getting at is that if you're using this for photography, feel free to turn off APS-C mode and just crop in post. But if you're using this for video, definitely keep the APS-C mode on. Obviously this information is only really useful if you have a full frame camera. If you plan to use this on an APS-C camera, you can just shoot as normal and not worry about any of that. So because of the fact I'm using a full frame camera, the a7 III, I can only really give you a partial review in terms of the photography side of this lens, but there's a lot of pros and cons that I think will apply to APS-C cameras and full frame. So one really good thing is the minimum focus distance, which is 45 centimeters, which means that you can get pretty close to your subject and also get a really amazing background blur. For example, my 85mm 1.8, which is the Sony native lens, I think the focus distance is around 80cm for that, which is basically almost double the focus distance of this. So if you're trying to get some kind of close-up-ish image with the 85mm, that's pretty much impossible unless you use the APS-C mode, whereas on this lens you can actually get really close quite easily. You can see from these photos just how blurred the background is and honestly even I wasn't prepared for the amount of background blur you get with this but I'd say that overall the bokeh is pretty pleasing to the eye. One thing that I did notice about this lens is that the colour and contrast is actually really good and in fact maybe better than some of my Sony lenses. When taking this out to get some sample photos and videos I didn't actually expect this lens to produce that good image quality and it's not because I don't think it's a good lens but usually lower priced lenses don't produce the best quality. I mean, it's just the way things are. If you're planning to use this lens at the full 0.95 wide aperture, that is honestly a razor thin depth of field. Especially if you plan to use this with the 45 centimeter minimum focus distance, you're really gonna get incredible separation from the background. 
And if you're using this in a creative way to draw in your audience to certain objects or images within a scene, you're gonna be able to achieve that easily with this lens. Even though we do get an incredible depth of field with this lens, I must admit that some of the backgrounds can look quite messy. Now, I'm not sure if that's just because of the way this lens is built, or if it's just a simple case of that's what happens when you're at 0.95 aperture. I don't have another 0.95 aperture lens to actually compare this to, but hopefully the images that I'm throwing up throughout this video will help you to decide if this is a good lens for you. I do think when using this lens, you need to be really careful about what's actually in your background. Sometimes you're gonna get an incredibly smooth background, but sometimes it is gonna look a little bit messy like some of those images I showed you. And in that case, you may need to stop it down to f1.4 or f1.8, so it's not quite as blurry in the background. Video, in my opinion, is where this lens really shines. And I think the fact that we have this declicked aperture, it's pretty obvious that this lens is built more for videographers than it is for photographers. If you want an almost smooth, dreamlike quality to your images, this lens provides that. And I did notice that sometimes that 0.95 aperture with the razor thin depth of field sometimes even makes objects glow slightly. I've never really experienced this on a lens before, but it must just be the fact that the aperture is so razor thin that we do get this kind of dreamy, glowy effect around objects. Now this does only really happen when you're using that 45 centimeter minimum focus distance. If you're a bit further away, you don't really have this issue. If you're someone who likes to shoot in low light, then this 0.95 aperture will also give you brilliant results. It's gonna let in so much more light to your sensor so you can get really sharp footage, even if there's very limited light sources. And hopefully from these clips, you can see just how well this lens performs in low light. Personally, I do really love the look you get from this lens when it comes to video, and although I think that kind of crazy depth of field should be used sparingly and not just in every single shot, you can certainly use it to achieve some interesting and creative shots. Now, this isn't gonna be a good lens review without talking about the lens sharpness, and I'm gonna avoid putting my opinion of the sharpness into the negative section of this video because this lens does perform really well, especially for that 225 pound price point. At the middle of the frame, you are gonna get some incredibly sharp images, especially if you're shooting at sort of F4, F8. Once you start stopping it down, I will just say it's really hard to actually get things in focus at 0.95 aperture because that depth of field is so thin. So if you're trying to, you know, take some video or some photos of something, just bear in mind that at 0 0.95 aperture, you're gonna have to be really, you know, good at being able to focus manually because it isn't easy. At the edges of the image, you can expect it to be less sharp, but honestly, for this price point, it doesn't surprise me. And I'm not kind of thinking, oh no, this lens is terrible now because it's not sharp around the edges. What else do you expect from a lens of this price point? And I'll say it again, for 200 pounds and 0 0.95 aperture, this is impressive. So let's now talk about some of the bad things about this lens. So I've got nothing negative to say about the actual build quality of this lens. This is built like a tank. I think it's really well made and it feels incredibly premium. I will say that the aperture ring at the front takes a bit of getting used to. I'm used to aperture rings being at the back of the lens nearer to the camera body. With this lens, it's kind of inverted. So you've got the aperture at the front and the focus ring at the back. This did lead to me sort of using the aperture ring instead of focusing a few times, which did get a bit annoying, but I think that's just something you'll get used to. And if you've got this on any kind of cinema rig with a follow focus, obviously that's not gonna be a problem because you'll just be using that instead of the ring on the lens. Now, the absolute worst thing about this lens is the chromatic aberration. And I think even for a lens that's 200 pounds, the chromatic aberration is pretty bad. So here on this tree, you can see the color fringing that we're getting, and this really isn't good. You know, if you're using this lens at 0 0.95 aperture and you're using it for video, this is what you can expect as well. And I think that this could be incredibly distracting. In any kind of high contrast scene, if you're using 0 0.95 aperture, this could potentially ruin your whole take or whatever it is you're filming. And the same goes for photos. You really don't want this kind of chromatic aberration there. I think it's only really when you get to kind of F8 that this chromatic aberration doesn't end up being this bad. But still, if you're someone that likes to shoot wide open, then you will be getting chromatic aberration. For photos, you can remove this quite easily in Lightroom and other image editing programs. But for video, as far as I know, it's not that easy to do. I know that you can remove chromatic aberration in DaVinci, but for someone who may want to just, you know, pick this up and do some video, if you haven't got the time or the skills to actually remove the chromatic aberration, then this will be an issue. The next bad thing is the flaring on this lens. And I don't think I've seen flaring on a lens as bad as this ever. So when shooting into the sunlight, the, the flaring is just, atrocious. Uh, <laughs> that's probably the most dramatic word I can use to describe how bad the flaring is, but honestly, it's bad. If you're doing some kind of professional shoot and you happen to shoot into the sun, some of the flaring you get from this is just, well, it will just ruin your footage. 
There's also this weird diagonal line that I got when I was shooting at certain angles towards the sun. Again, if you're doing this for video, this is just, you know, inexcusable. This should not happen on a lens, I don't think, even at this price point. So this type of flaring really puts some clear limitations on the lens, especially if you're someone who likes to shoot towards sunlight. This is probably the biggest downfall of this lens, the flaring. And for me personally, I do like to shoot into sunlight quite often, like this music video that I shot recently. And this was using the 24 mil from Samyang that I'm actually using now. And if I was using this lens, I know for a fact I'd be getting some pretty terrible flaring. And that's why I think this lens should be used as a creative tool rather than an everyday video lens. So if you're willing to put the negative points aside about this lens, like the flaring and the chromatic aberration, I think you can still get some pretty creative and interesting shots with this lens. And that super wide aperture of 0.95 means you're going to get some great footage in low light, as well as some really interesting close-up shots if you want to use it that way. One thing I do want to mention about this lens before I close off this video is that because this lens doesn't have the sharpest image quality, you know, ever compared to, say, G Master lenses or, you know, all those top tier lenses that the camera manufacturers make, this can actually be a really good thing for filmmakers that want a softer image that's more filmic. And paired with that D-click aperture ring for filmmaking, this can be a great low budget lens for first time filmmakers or even professional filmmakers who just want to add a few more lenses to their kit bag. Overall, I think this is actually a pretty good lens for the price point. The chromatic aberration and the flaring are obviously quite disappointing, but I think overall, you're gonna get some really interesting images from this lens. So there you have it guys, that's pretty much it for my review of the Seven Artisans 0.95 Aperture 50mm lens for APS-C cameras. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. If you have any comments or questions about this product, feel free to leave them down below and I'll get back to you when I can. And if you want to see more from me, be sure to subscribe, hit that little bell icon as well, and you'll be notified when I upload something new, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.